All right, we're in the home stretch here in the race for mayor in New York. And tonight, 15 days from the primary, again set for September 10th. It's just two weeks from tomorrow. Now, on the Democratic side of the race, clearly a case of three candidates fighting for two spots in the runoff. You got the public advocate, Bill de Blasio, Council Speaker Christine Quinn, and former city comptroller Bill Thompson. And in the paper endorsement race, it's clean sweep for one Christine Quinn. Quinn getting thumbs up from the Daily News last week, from the Times this weekend, and from the Post today. Now, the most influential from the Democrats, of course, the great lady here, the Times, she called Quinn a candidate who is ready to carry on at least as well as Mayor Bloomberg did, adding Quinn offers the judgment or record of achievement anyone should want in a mayor, and that she, quote, inspires the most confidence that she would be the right mayor for the inevitable uh, times when hope and idealism collide with the challenge of getting something done. Dominic, what endorsements still matter in New York when you run for office? The only newspaper that's worth anything is the New York Times. It may impact voters on the Upper West Side. Um, I was going to say the outer boroughs, but the outer boroughs don't count in this case. So Upper West Side, um, more influential uh, of, of New Yorkers. That and some union endorsements, DC 37, 1199. It's all about now, it's no longer the message. Even though you can energize the base with the message, it's now quickly moving to get out the vote. Whoever, and you mentioned it, and I'll put it in an easier way. It's three chairs left, and whenever the music stops, that's what these candidates are doing right now, there's only room for two seats. You, you forgot the Sharpton endorsement. We'd been yeah. talking about this last and week. And the doesn't. Sharpton endorsement. Thank you very much. That's a major one. Thank you. That's it's out there. It's only major insofar as Bill Thompson hasn't nailed down no, the African-American community. No, that's not true. Community. That's not true. If <laughs> Bill de Blasio gets the endorsement of Al Sharpton, Good because, night, Mr. Thompson. That's, I think we just agreed. Okay. I hate to tell you. Okay. The, 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 well, I want to disagree. There we go. I disagree. The, 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 the problem with the endorsements <laughs> is that the Times endorsement of Christine Quinn was almost like this exactly wrong thing for a Democratic primary. You can Vote be for Christine because she can be Bloomberg too. That's not. That's her weakness. Yeah. But Richard, you know most people are not going to actually read the endorsement. All they know is that the Times went with Christine Quinn. Uh, I think that the primary voter pays much more attention than you think, especially the undecided. Well, primary you guys voter. mentioned Bill Thompson. The, the issue here is whether black folk are going to stick with Thompson yeah. or go to De Blasio. Well, one, that's he, what this he, Bill Thompson's ad specifically addresses that here. This is the first ad of the season for the guy, and he directly went after a specific opponent. It wasn't Christine Quinn. His target, Bill de Blasio. Bill de Blasio's ad lies about my position on stop and frisk. The New York Times confirms how misleading it is. Nothing's more important than keeping our city safe and treating our people with respect. No one needs to explain that to me. I've lived it. And I should say that's the first ad directly uh, going after it. Uh, what he's doing there, guys, obviously, that's speaking to the black vote. And, and does he think that the Blasio's his best chance to try and peel out voters from him to get in the runoff? I think the Thompson folks are acknowledging there might be a problem. Houston, we might have a problem. They've got to energize the base. De Blasio is outflanking them. He is out black, the black candidate in the race. It just seems like he's elevating de Blasio, which to me still seems like the outlier here. Because if he doesn't stop de Blasio, room for two. Quinn and de Blasio. You think de Blasio's for real? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, the, the, the far left led by Richard and his crowd is, <laughs> has rallied around de Blasio. I mean, they view him as the progressive liberal Democrat. Even though... <laughs> He didn't exactly get a love letter from the Times in terms of what his real role was uh, with the Hillary He's for the Senate the campaign. Most, if you will, faceless and uh, yeah. contourless of the candidates. And what he's become is what uh, you saw in the Republican presidential primaries. Anybody but Mitt. So if it was Bachman, it was Santorum, it was a, a, a series of people who then just... De Blasio has to be very careful because if he's merely the alternative to Quinn, mm -hmm. he's not going to make the runoff. He's got to do something much more positive and engaged and grounded. And uh, the, the notion that it's a fight. Black folk will vote for white people. More often than white people will vote for a black candidate. And this Wait, race is... the tail part of that more often than... Black folks will vote for a white candidate right. much more easily than white folks will vote for a black candidate. And th th this is only <laughs> that's <laughs> right. All right, let's stop there. Now, on the Republican you're, side, you're Joe Loda, he also along. got endorsements from the Times, as well as the Post, and he's out with a new spot. But this one, take a look here. 
it doesn't have Joe Loda in it. In fact, it's got only the former mayor and Laura's Loda's former boss, Rudy Giuliani, out front. In the ad, Giuliani, he hits back against ads from Casamitidis and his claims that Loda's responsible for fair heights on the MTA bridges. And he quotes Loda describing Port Authority police as mall cops. Now, the former mayor, he calls those allegations false, and he says the city deserves better. And Tom, obviously Loda, he hasn't made it a secret. Um, he says vote for me is a vote to return to the Rudy years, but he has thrown both arms around it. Do you think this is his best strategic chance to win? Yeah, and I mean, I think he will win, and I think that he is, but he is by far the best candidate. I mean, Katsimatidis shouldn't even be in the same room with Loda when it comes to public policy and having but actually done something in the city. But it seems like this will be a general strategy, too, if he gets... Uh, I, don't, he I don't think so. No? Uh, no, because I think that, you know, you have to play the dance that Richard says you got a primary and a general. In a general, you don't want to be talking about Rudy Giuliani right. so much. Um, so, you know... He was he, forced into this. He was, absolutely. Katsimatidis was starting to tag him. Right, right. He was forced to bring Rudy he out. Rudy, Rudy will bring people back to Loda, but... Do you really think any of this matters? What do you mean? You think that there's going to be a seriously contested general election? No, I've said that from moment one. I, right. and, I, and I actually I told Joe. I, I think, think it's no. I, I the, the only pathway that he has there, the only pathway, is if de Blasio was the Democratic nominee, there is a small window I for Loder there. Yep. Outside of that, there is no window. There's a window. I think here's well, Loder. There is no. Loder is playing Loder's this for five. To to this is a five year race for Loder. We're going to give a gift to Andrew next segment. We're going to talk about his favorite guy, maybe even break out the comb over report. Who knows? Donald Trump. Well, not just here, um, the egomaniac, but apparently accused of fraud. And look at her $40 million case. It's coming out swinging against those allegations, of course. We'll have the latest straight ahead.